this point, I'm kind of just seeing what's in the ground, you know? Try not to spend too, too much time on... Is that a ring right there? I think that might be a ring? Another piece of jewelry, dude. With the freaking find X, baby. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> All right, before we get into metal detecting, let me just show you what this metal detector actually came with. So this bag right here, this is one of the accessories it came with. And to be fair, it's actually a decent quality uh, bag. I don't know how often I would actually store my metal detector in it. Maybe if you're going out for a trip or something, if you're traveling, going out in the woods, maybe this would be a good accessory. Now let me tell you right here, this is going to be basically useless. Um, this thing maybe could be used for like soft sugar sand or something, maybe at the beach. But other than that, I'm not going to really be able to dig any uh, actual holes with this thing. So I think this one's going to stay in the car for now. All right, so this detector actually does come with a pair of headphones. This whole bundle that you're seeing right here costs around 150 US dollars. So while these headphones are uh, seemingly a little bit cheap, to be fair, I tried them out already and they don't sound the absolute worst. If you need a pair of headphones, you know, this will do for a little while. All right, now for the main course. Bring out the deliciousness, what we've all been looking for, huh? Right here, the Noak Defined X. Just showed up to this little park out here though, it looks pretty nice. I've uh, metal detected this spot a couple times before, so this should be the true test for this little metal detector. Can it find anything that the others may have missed? Let's fire them up. Actually starts off pretty quick. This metal detector is relatively simple, it only has three search modes. It's got field, park, and beach. It's got a sensitivity dial right here, you can, you know, dial the sensitivity back or pump it up if you want to go a little bit deeper. So we might start just maybe with maximum sensitivity at first. It's got a brightness on the screen, got a couple volume levels we can adjust, but other than that, it's really a super simple metal detector. All right, I'm not really sure what to think about this, but my first signal, it's giving me a beep here. I'm just gonna give you guys an honest opinion of what I think of this metal detector. My first beep, it's giving me a beep, but it's not really giving me much of a target ID. So I really don't know what to think of that one. <laughs> I think we're going to dig it out just to see what it could possibly be. Seemingly also, I get a little bit of interference here with my pinpointer. I just noticed that. So that might be a make it or break it for some of you guys. Let's see real quick right here. I mean, maybe it's an iron signal or something. Doesn't sound very good. Is this it? It could be that little piece of aluminum foil right there. That could certainly be it, but it was uh, kind of a questionable signal. So let's see, was that it? Yes, that was it. My first little uh, signal out here was a piece of aluminum foil. Didn't know what to think about that one, but let's give this thing a chance, see if it can find some coins. One benefit I've noticed so far, at least, is the metal detector is quiet. What? Yeah, I was just gonna say it's quiet until you actually get a beep. So that's definitely a you know an advantage with these cheaper metal detectors. Sometimes they want to beep off even when there's nothing there, and that's usually not a good sign. So here's another one. It's uh, able to acquire the pull tabs, no problem. But I haven't found a coin yet, so let's keep looking for a coin. All right, next to a picnic table right here. Here's kind of a high one. Where was it? Right here. 69 on the ID. What is a 69 on this machine? It's right towards the top. Maybe a coin? 69? 69 just in time. <laughs> My first coin acquired with the Nocta Find X. It's a 1993 penny. <laughs> we got some squirrels out here hanging out. What are you looking for, little guy? You looking for some nuts? Oh, he's like playing. <laughs> Let me try to get you guys a photo of him. I actually brought along a camera with me. Let me know if you like these nature shots. Leave me a comment if you appreciate them. All right, 
right, on the find X right there, it's reading up a 48. It sounds pretty solid. I don't know what a 48 is going to be. Paint thing? <laughs> oh, wait a second. It's right there. Wait, we have something? Oh, we do, we do. Looks like we actually got a piece of something here. Hey, that's not too, too bad, actually. It's a small little charm right there, so that's pretty good for, uh, you know, El Cheapo machine. So let's keep going. First little piece of jewelry with the find X. Not too shabby, about an inch down. There's a 36 right there, too. I will say this metal detector, it's got pretty fast recovery speed, so if you're hunting like trashy areas, you know, it's kind of a benefit for sure. I'm not really too sure on depth yet, but I am gonna do some further testing with this machine just to kind of get an idea of maybe a general depth you can expect out of it. All right, let's check out these swing sets for a minute, see if we got anything over here. I was over here not too, too long ago with, I think, my Nocta Legend, so if there's anything at all over here, it should be pretty good for this machine. There's one. 73. Hey, there we go. There's a coin. That's a 1973 penny, so a little bit better than the last, huh? All right, it's calling something iron right there. May as well pull it out of the sugar sand, huh? Pull a couple karma points, if anything. Some rusty iron in the playground. Just some type of, uh, I don't know, hardware maybe. Some junk. All right, something else just stopped me in my tracks right here. I'm thinking maybe for coin shooting at uh, modern parks especially. It seems like this machine definitely has a chance. I don't really know if you're going to get too crazy depth on it. I haven't done any testing on depth yet. But um, seemingly when I swing over a coin, it always gives me a pretty good response on it. It's a 2001 Roosevelt. At least the three coins that I have swung over, they've given me a pretty obvious response, you know. Sound a lot better than the little scrappy pieces of aluminum and stuff. So for gold, I'm not really sure how this machine's going to do on gold but you don't really want to write anything off until you use it for a little while, you know? Yeah, listen to the recovery speed, though. That's one thing it's got going for it. Really high recovery speed. This one's in the 20s. Let's see what it is. Right there. Oh wow, it's a piece of some Timberland sunglasses. I've heard of them, but I don't know if that's a good brand or not. Timberland? <laughs> They've lost their glasses. Finding a couple pieces of assorted metal now. Now we're getting into it. Twenty-four. At this point I'm kind of just seeing what's in the ground, you know? Try not to spend too, too much time on... Is that a ring right there? I think that might be a ring? No freaking way. Oh! Oh, it's a ring on a necklace, dude. Look at that. Whoa, man. The little find X comes through. That's actually pretty cool. It's probably like a junker ring, but look at that. I don't think I've ever found an, a ring on a chain like that before. Look at that bad boy. Let's see if we got anything on this. I f don't really know what it was reading. Wait a second. It's got some markings in the band there. Wait just a moment here. Wait just a moment. <laughs> the little find X comes through? Holy moly. Oh, I think it might be... I think it might be like one of those Lord of the Rings rings. It has a bunch of inscriptions in there, but I don't know what it says. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, can I get you guys a close-up of this? That's what I'm talking about. First day out with the find X. It's been really slow. Take this little thing, too. Let's see what it was reading up without the little uh, chain on it. Hey man, ring! Ring time! Got another one over there too. 
listen to this one. It's a 22. So actually a pretty low ringer. That might be gold. I don't think it's gonna be gold though. More likely maybe stainless steel. But hey, that's what's up, man. Got us a ring already with the Findex. Cannot complain. Beautiful. Doesn't get much better than that. Out in kind of a little random area too, over by the baseball courts, in between some uh, picnic tables and the swing set. So no rhyme or reason necessarily why it would be over here. Very nice, very nice. Where's that high ringer? There it is. Yeah, listen to that. It's got an insane recovery speed. It's probably close in performance maybe to this Simplex Lite, but it's just hard to tell. I've only been using it for one day, you know? It's a 1994 penny. Oh, oh there's the rest of those glasses right there. There's some more of the Timberlands, I think. <laughs> probably been whacked by the lawnmower. This one maybe sounds a little bit smaller or something. I don't know. I want to try to just go for the different signals, you know? Just see what this machine's got. Don't just dig out pennies all day, right? Kind of see what else, see what kind of other abilities it has. <laughs> Does it like the small stuff? Seemingly a little bit, I guess. There's something small. Oh no, it's a pencil eraser. <laughs> well, we know it can find the pencil erasers. Not too shabby, not too shabby. I see something here. Yeah, definitely turn your pinpointer off when you're looking for signals, obviously. Should be kind of obvious, but your pinpointer does interfere a little bit. This one's reading a 19 to 27, and I just happened to see it right on top of the ground here. Look at this. <laughs> Actually finding a couple little interesting things today. It's a right wireless earbud. Probably came with some earwax too. Wait a second. There we go. There's another something right there, I think. Another piece of jewelry, dude. With the freaking fine decks, baby. <laughs> Look at that. What do we have? What do we have? Oh, it looks like it's a, uh, whoa, she's a blinger. Looks like it might be a belly button ring, honestly. I never really have any luck with anything precious. They always look really nice, you know? They always got nice stones in them. Yep, that one's still got the little bead on it, too. Did you take it out of your belly button? Or, ooh, did your belly button, like, rip? Ugh, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> Anyways, there's another little piece of jewelry with the find X. I'll take it. That just shows you, especially when you're hunting in an area like this where the jewelry isn't gonna be super, super deep and your your goal really is kind of sifting through the trash and coins. Uh, this machine does really good so far at doing that. Like I mentioned earlier though, it's when you uh, start to push depth a little bit, you start to run into problems and potentially um, the ability to identify iron might not be top notch, but what can you expect for 150 bucks, right? Another piece of jewelry, come on with it. 45, it definitely lets you know when there's something underneath the coil, right? So, so far, not too, too bad. Now that hand digger tool that came with it, eh, for the sugar sand right here, it would have worked, but you're definitely gonna wanna get you another hand digger. <laughs> That plastic thing ain't gonna cut it, man. All right, here's kind of a perfect example between park mode and field mode. I'll show you an obvious difference right here. I'm in park mode and this is what I've been using most of the day, but listen to this signal that I just got in park mode. Where is it? Oh wait, that would help to turn your sensitivity up. Yes, yes. But listen, if you can just barely hear it. I just barely heard it in park mode. It's just a whisper, you probably can't even hear it. Now let me switch over to field mode. Listen to the difference in that. Holy moly. But then here, look, there's that same thing I was talking about where it doesn't always give you a target ID on a really deep uh, signal. So that can definitely be a bit of an issue. I'm really not sure what I'm going for here, you know? Without target ID, 
I just, I have no idea. Let's give it a shot. Let's go for it and see about how deep it is and maybe even see how big it is too. I'm kind of curious why it wasn't giving me a good signal in park. So it's right here. It wasn't really that deep. I mean, it was an odd shaped piece of metal, but that field mode just slapped it out in comparison to park mode, you know? Not necessarily a desirable target by any means, but just keep that in mind. If you're going for depth, definitely pick a uh, field over park. So it seems like the 69s already, I'm getting a little bit familiar with them. I think 69 on the target ID for the most part is gonna be a penny. So keep an eye out for those 69s. They may not be the most desirable, but then there you go. That's why you always have to keep an open mind. And look at that. I've been hunting this park at this point for a couple years now, and I still continually pull these things out of the hole. They're nothing significant, but this is an old bottle cap from Nintendo. This I think is from the 90s. It's a holiday game right here. It's a Nintendo holiday game bottle cap. That's about one of the best bottle caps you can find though, right? Can't complain about that one. But it's crazy to me that, you know, you go over these parks time and time again, yet you still miss stuff. Another strong hit right there, a little bit closer to the top. 66, 67. Probably gonna be our common. No! And again, that one kind of threw us for a loop. I thought it was going to be a penny, but that one's actually a steel bottle cap. I wasn't really getting too much indication that it was a cap there. This one's in the 70s. It's kind of like mixed a little bit. Right in the sugar sand here. Okay. That one is uh, one of those little lighter flint wheels there. Piece off of a Bic lighter. All right, real quick, the uh, playground is open, so let's jump in there for just a minute. I think that some kitties are gonna show up, so we gotta go fast, go fast. Sounds like around a 30 on the target ID. Just trying to dig up some different signals too. You know, I could go around and pluck out the 69s all day long. <laughs> I'm sure I would end up with mostly pennies in bottle caps, but I like investigating, right? Let's see what else we got in here. I'm over by the fence now, which isn't entirely good. What's that? What is that? Oh, another? Holy moly. I just got another freaking piece of jewelry right here. What is that? <laughs> Yo, the little Simplex man, or not the Simplex, the Findex is killing it. And it's not necessarily about the machine. You have to swing over the right spot, but there's gotta be something to this machine. I've gotten three pieces of jewelry in about an hour's time. That one almost looks like a clip-on earring to me, so, you know, not the most significant find ever. But that's cool, it still plucked out another piece of jewelry, you know? It's got like a little spider on there with even like a little blue stone. Pretty cool, pretty cool, kind of unique, right? Anything a little bit different I always enjoy to find. Anything to break, in up, break up the monotony of uh, pennies and pull tabs, you know? Always feels good. All right, you know, when I first came out here with this metal detector, I was a little bit discouraged. I was kind of like, you know, what can this really offer, right? It's $150, it's not much different than any of the other machines on the market, like the simplexes and stuff, you know? But it's not always about getting the best performance out of a machine. Sometimes it's just about taking it out there and using it, you know? Being efficient with it, being able to dig out a good amount of targets at the end of the day. So while this probably isn't going to be the machine you're going to take out and look for super, super deep silver coins, I can't for sure say that it'll be good or not good in that environment. But for a park environment like this, uh, for having the 11 inch round coil on it, seemingly it does pretty good. But let me talk to you a little bit about that 11 inch round coil just for a minute. 
So uh, when it comes down to the Find X Pro, there is a couple other coil options that you have available to you. My first impression actually buying this machine, I thought I was able to use my Simplex light coil on here, but unfortunately it looks like you're only able to use the, uh, the newer generation Simplex coils on the Find X Pro. Whereas this uh, Find X, it seems to just be stuck stock with the 11 inch round. So I think the Find X Pro runs about $30 more. When I bought this uh, initially, the Find X Pro was out of stock. So I figured for 150 bucks, you know, the Find X Pro is a little bit closer in price to the Simplex Lite. Whereas this Find X is actually more uh, priced towards the Xterra Voyager. So for $150 seemingly, I'm gonna ask you guys, what do you think? For 150 bucks and an hour's time, how did we do out here and how do you think the Find X performed? Got a little bird up in the tree. Let me see if I can get you a shot of him. So this one right here has got to be the best find of the day. Um, I didn't do any like acid testing on it. I really don't think it's gold, but I guess you never know for sure until you put the 10 karat acid to it, right? It's got a couple markings on the inside of the band, but they do to me resemble the Lord of the Rings style ring. So that one, that might be one of those Lord of the Rings rings. The Lord of the Rings ring, we have found it. <laughs> Got a couple pieces of junk, that's kind of the usual, you know. Doesn't matter what metal detector I have, if I got a $600 machine or a $150 machine, I'm pretty much gonna find junk no matter what. We did pull out a couple um, decent coins out there. Nothing really old on the coins, but it did pretty good on the coins, I would say. Of course, the find of the day has got to be that ring, but we did get a couple pieces of jewelry on the day too. The little belly button ring, little turtle, and we even got a little earring right there too. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that little uh, hunt. That was my first hunt out with the Nokta Find X. I would say my first impressions are decent, you know? I still got to use it some more, make sure it holds up over time, and really you can't know for sure how a machine works on just one hunt out, you know? Hey, if you guys made it all the way to the end of the video, consider leaving me a comment. Let me know what you liked and what you didn't like about the video, and uh, hey, if you really want to help the channel grow, hit it with a like for me. I sincerely appreciate it. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys on the next one.